How's it going everybody? For today's beer review, we're going to be taking a look at Avery Brewing Company's The Beast, a Grand Crew Ale. Well, we have another Demons of Ale series brew by Avery Brewing Company here. This is The Beast, which says it's a Grand Crew Ale. Um, but when searching that online or on Beer Advocate, it comes back as a Belgian dark, strong ale. And that's what most people seem to uh, to say. So I don't know if, if Grand Cru Ale is just another like a play on words for that or if that's a specific type of Belgian Dark Strong Ale or how that works. Um, to give you some information here, this is the annual release for August of 2014. This is batch number 12. Um, this beer comes in at 31.25 degrees plateau for all of those who care about the original gravity. Um, and it has an absolutely staggering, monstrous ABV on it. Um, this beer for this batch, this year's batch at least, or I guess really last year's batch, um, came in at 16.1% alcohol by volume. Um, I'm almost positive that effectively makes this beer the second strongest, most potent brew that I've ever drank. Um, the strongest being um, the brew I had of Dogfish Head 120, which the one I had was um, estimated to be at 20% alcohol by volume. Um, but 16, that's huge. I mean, you're going to drink this one single bottle and be um, probably tipsy. I won't lie. What you have to realize is... 16, you know, you know, most, like I say this a lot, but whiskey, like Jack Daniels, most whiskey is 40% alcohol by volume. Um, you take 16%, let's keep it simple and say roughly 20%. I know it's a little different. So you can say a little ha a little less than half this bottle. We'll say right here. Imagine just drinking that much straight Jack Daniels whiskey, but it's also carbonated. And what that does is those bubbles in your stomach push that alcohol into the lining of your stomach, and it gets absorbed into your bloodstream pretty much instantaneously. As soon as it goes down your throat and hits your stomach, it's in your bloodstream. That's why it hits you so fast. You're probably going to be tipsy before you even finish the glass of beer, especially if you're going to be sipping on it for a while. So... Drink this one at home or if you have somebody driving you. Anyway, the commercial description on this says, Ale with raisins, dates, molasses, and honey, brewed and bottled by Avery Brewing Company in Boulder, Colorado. The Beast is a seducer, accommodating, complicated, powerful, dark, unfiltered, and created to last the ages. Beyond this, it's futile to attempt to describe him, he will unveil himself differently to each of his followers. The mark is in his constitution, brewed with, uh, it's a bit of a long um, ingredient list here. It says, brewed with Rocky Mountain water, two-row malted barley, honey malt, and imported Belgian specialty grains, aromatic pale wheat, roasted wheat, and special bee. Hops are Magnum, Galena, Saz, Sarsaise, Hallertau, Tetnang, and Hers Brucker, Brucker, brewing sugars, raisins, dates, blackstrap molasses, alfalfa honey, turbinado sugar, and dark Belgian candy sugar, and a hellion of a Belgian yeast strain. So there's a lot that goes into this beer, and obviously so for the ABV being so high. Now as far as the um, glassware goes, you know, I, would be, I was tempted, and many people would be, to drink this out of a snifter, my Duvel glass. Um, but since it's classified as a Belgian dark strong ale, um, I wanted to keep things a little traditional. So I am using my Chimay beer chalice. This is just what I demand to drink Belgian beers out of, because if you've got it on hand, why not use it for what it was crafted for? So, let's get the cap off of here and uh, see what this is like. I have no idea what's in store for me on this beer. I can smell it from here. Alrighty, straight out of the bottle, the color pours. Interesting, not what I was expecting. It's like rust, caramel, kind of copper orange color. Very, very low, weak head potential, as you would uh, probably have it imagined and expected if the alcohol being so monstrous. Um, formed a very short, maybe 
fourth finger of a medium tan colored head and I promise you within seconds it's going to dissipate because um, the alcohol is not going to allow for very good head retention. Holding this into the light, it is an extremely dark and murky, um, kind of like a mixture of um, copper, rust, caramel, mahogany, and orange sort of tones. I think probably rust is the color because it kind of has some of those ruby tones to it too. Um, really interesting, almost like a pomegranate juice sort of color there, huh? Uh, looks very good in the glass, very unique. I would give it a um, 5 out of 5 as far as appearance goes because I don't think I've ever seen a beer assume quite that color as far as the smell goes. Ah, very good. Massive though. Very complex. Lots of stuff going on. You've got your more classic things you'd expect from the style. Black cherry which is kind of lending way into like a black cherry and black grape wine, which is something you get a lot in the dark, I mean, Belgian strong dark ales in the quads. Prunes, definitely raisins and dates. Definitely the molasses in there too. There is a, just a little bit of just kind of a, um, a sweet sugary confectionery sort of like feel going on with the aroma. The big thing, and plenty of alcohol, of course, but um, the big thing going on with this is kind of this medley of very dark fruits. These aren't like IPA fruits, um, you know, like mangoes and stuff. These are things like dates, um, prunes, raisins, figs, um, black grape, black cherry. Um, imagine taking all of those and kind of... Um, roasting them and then stewing them and reducing them down in a pot um, with some alcohol and kind of making it into this sort of medley of dark fruit wines. That's kind of what you're getting in this. With just little confectionery tones like molasses and kind of some candy um, in there. Not like candy, like candy you get on Halloween. Just little touches of sweetness, sort of. Really awesome. Um, it's like a five on the aroma as well. Without further ado, let's give it a taste. Whoa. Wow. Man. That is almost coin cloyingly sweet. Oh man. I mean, it's impressive, but I don't know. It's like too strong. I'm going to try to take a very small sip and explain what's going on. It's just a immense sweet alcohol up front which lends way to um, quite bitter, almost stringent bitter tastes on the back end. Uh, I won't lie, um, if there are other tastes going on with those dark fruits, um, like I described in the smell, um, I can't taste them because they're being just absolutely overpowered by this immense, immense sweet alcohol. Um, you know, this same thing happened to me when I was drinking their Samales Oak Aged Ale. Um, I gave it a good review on camera. I'm not sure why. Uh, I drain poured that beer afterwards because it was so sweet. It was like drinking simple syrup. It was just too much. I couldn't do it. Um, this one isn't that on that level, but it's very close, um, which is super unfortunate because I feel like with this Demons of Ale series, I feel like their brewmaster or whoever's in charge just, just doesn't know when to stop. Like, I'm all for these crazy over-the-top beers like Dogfish Head 120, stuff getting up into that like 15 to 20% range, but 
there's got to be a balance of flavor. I think that's the lesson in this beer review to learn is balance is key. You've got to have balance. You can sit here and boast all day about all these flavors that you put into your beer, but if there's so much sweet burning alcohol in your beer that you can't taste the rest of those, then it's worth shit because, um, you know, it's got great curb appeal, sure. Um, you know, it got me to buy a bottle, but at the end of the day, what you're left with is just this, it's like rubbing alcohol and sugar just melted down and, and, and reduced. And, you know, I can, I can taste some faint things of, of Belgian styled beers, like, you know, like the dark fruits and all that jazz. But it's just entirely masked and overpowered by this strong, upfront, just overly sugary sweetness. Um, and then this um, very chemical, stringent um, bitterness on the end. I mean, it's like, it's like unnatural bitterness. It's like Windex being sprayed on your tongue or something. It's just like overdone to the most massive degree. Too bitter too sweet, not in good ways either. Um, this beer had some major potential because the aroma, fantastic. The appearance, amazing. That taste, just <laughs> god-awful. Um, undrinkable in my books. I don't think I'll probably be able to get the rest of this down, honestly, because um, it's it's just too much. It's uh, almost to a liquor standpoint at this point. So that has been my review of um, Avery Brewing Company's The Beast. I really wish now that I had let this thing sit and age for a, another year or two, probably, and you know, hopefully that would have um, aged out some of those harsh tastes and all that alcohol, but I don't know if it would have really done much for the sweetness. And that's why I wish more breweries who are going to do crazy things like this um, would follow in the footsteps of Deschutes Brewery and put a best after date on their labels. Um, if you take a look at um, Deschutes um, Black Butte, you know, 22 or whatever, what have you, the birthday one, um, their Abyss or their Mirror Mirror, all three of those have a best after date. And that's the brewmaster pretty much saying, yeah, I know it's going to be intense. You need to let it sit and age to enjoy it properly. Um, you know, it was probably not the best judgment on my part to drink this now. I probably should have let it sit and age a little bit more. I don't know if it would have taken care of that sweetness because the Samael one I had was aged pretty much ideally and perfectly, and it still was just a sugary bomb of overdone sweetness. So I'm going to say that one's inexcusable. Um, it probably would have gotten a little better if I had let it age, but I'm not going to fully take the blame for this one because I they just need to tone it down a little bit. Anyway, that's been my review of Avery Brewing Company's The Beast Grand Cru Ale. Hope you guys enjoy the beer review as always. If you see this, buy one, but let it sit for a couple years. Catch you on the next beer review.